Imagine yourself in the middle of, I don't know, a pandemic and you had the cure, the solution to the disease. Would you keep it to yourself? Would you be embarrassed or would you shout it out to the whole world? Let's talk about it on this episode of Inverse. We're not talking about a virus here. We're talking about sin, and the solution to sin is the gospel. Thanks so much for joining us on here on Inverse in the studio. I'm Justin Kim, and in the studio we have our friends. We have Sebastian Kelly and Jonathan, and we're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to read scripture. So we're going to encourage you to take out your Bibles, whether it's on your phone or in a book somewhere, and get into the actual text of we're in the verse, as they, uh, ah, as, as ah, they say here. I see what you did there. Okay. So, uh, Sebastian, can you please pray for us? Yes, let's pray. Father in heaven, uh, we are grateful, Lord, to be here. We're also thankful, Father, that we have the opportunity amidst these trying times to study your word and to gain encouragement. Mm -hmm. We pray that you would be with those who may have loved ones or friends who are suffering under the weight of COVID-19, that you may provide comfort and healing and Lord, we also pray that you would guide us to the person who is at the very center of the gospel and ultimately the center of the book of Romans. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord, for these gifts, and we offer this prayer from our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sebastian. I'm very excited about this episode and this quarter. Uh, we're looking at the book of Romans, the letter to the Romans. It's central to Christianity. And for those of you out there who may not be familiar with the book of Romans, the letter to the Romans, we want to encourage you to go to inversebible.org and you can actually download and look at the, the online Bible study guide that we have. It's for free and it's an opportunity to get into chapter by chapter, verse by verse study of, of this. Frankly, it's a difficult book, mm -hmm. but it is a lot logical book. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do from episode by episode and through our discussion and through your study, we're going to look at this just really, uh, what is it, what do they call it? A cornerstone, centerpiece, the, the core Quintessential of, 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 of Christianity uh, and points to Jesus. So let's go to chapter one, Romans chapter one. And Callie, um, we would ideally like to read the whole chapter there, but let's get to the core of chapter one. We'll start in verse uh, 13, 14. Let's, let's do 14 and go to verse 20, please. All right. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Mm. Very good. Thanks, Kelly. Jonathan, tell me a little bit about this book of Romans. Mm -hmm. um, who wrote it and, you know, why is he writing to these Roman people? Who are these Romans? Mm -hmm. Are they Italian? Are they, <laughs> what's, what's going on here? Yeah, <laughs> this is a great <laughs> question. Romanian. <laughs> oh, yeah, that could be one. Uh, written by Paul, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the great apostles um, who felt a burden to bring the gospel message mm. of Jesus to the whole world. You know, he did not stay in Jerusalem where he's from, you know, that area. But he said, no, I'm going out there because Jesus called me to share the gospel with what, you know, the Bible calls the Gentiles, those mm -hmm. who are not Jewish. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did that through many missionary trips. And um, the, the gospel had spread through some of the converted Jews who were in Jerusalem for the feast. They would go back to you know, Rome where they used to live or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it would spread a little bit. So churches would pop up here and there. Paul started some churches. But he felt the burden to you know, uh, encourage the believers or, or help them with their understanding of the gospel. So he wrote a letter to the Romans, we believe around the end of the you know, 57, 58 AD. Mm -hmm. um, so this was you know, 28 years-ish after Jesus you know, died. Mm -hmm. And so 
um, the gospel is spreading, and Paul is trying to encourage now the believers here in the Roman church. And you know, as we're going to study here in, in this in this segment, uh, we're going to see that you know, at the core of his of this book is the gospel is mm-hmm. Jesus, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Jesus. It's cool. I don't know when you, when you when I first get a Bible, I always go to the back and I look at the maps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. you always see like the first missionary and the second missionary yes. trip of Paul and the right. third, and then it's not a fourth, but his trip to Rome, where it's just <laughs> funny. And you see all like you know whatever. <laughs> and this it was it was it was very. Uh, not normal mm-hmm. for a Jew, and Paul was Jewish, yeah, right. to, and as you said, to to go out of his comfort zone mm-hmm. and to talk about the gospel to other people who didn't believe. Right. And as you're saying, Jonathan, I want to underscore that, that uh, let's go to verse 11 uh, there. This is a very personal letter, right? This is a, this is an email. It's mm-hmm. a very long email. Yes. Yes. Uh, and you don't want to, what is it, T, 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 L, D. Too long, didn't read. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> but you want to read this, yeah? You totally want to read this. Uh, and, and go to verse 11. For I long to see you mm. that I may impart to you some spiritual gift mm-hmm. so that you may be established. That is, uh, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now, I do not want you to be unash- unaware, brethren, that I often plan to come to you. I mean, these are just, this is kind of like, right. these aren't the best Bible verses to memorize when you're in the middle of a crisis. Yeah, I mean, it's still inspired Word of God, but it's a personal email, it's a personal correspondence going mm-hmm. on here. Yeah. yeah. So let's get, uh, that's kind of setting up, and verse 14 is where Callie started reading. Um, Sebastian, what's what's going on in these verses? Let's actually look at the micro uh, of this of the verse. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the first thing that Paul is establishing the burden that he has to mm-hmm. preach the gospel, which mm-hmm. he's that's about to clear, yeah. kind of burden. unfold throughout yeah. this. And in fact, he says in the text, that I am a debtor, mm, mm. right? So in essence, Paul is is looking at the fact that he owes the gospel to them. Mm. And in, in essence, right, it's a debt, not so much that they lent the gospel to him and now he's paying back the gospel okay, to them. Yeah. That's but, a little confusing there. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. so when you're like, I'm a debtor, like mm-hmm. I owe you the right, gospel, right, but right. he's speaking more about his own experience. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like what the gospel has accomplished for me mm-hmm. is actually making me a debtor to those who don't have it or may not fully understand it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a critical component. We don't just owe the gospel to people who don't, who've never heard it, but even to yes. people who may have heard it, but don't have a full grasp and understanding mm-hmm. of it. And, and you think about it, t- we have to put ourselves into the context of the times. Yes. We are now after 1500 years of Jewish traditions, Jewish, you know, the Jews doing their thing. Mm-hmm. And that was, you know, God gave them a lot of these rituals and all these things they had to do, mm-hmm. but they had kind of missed the point uh, in some, in, in some regards to, to the Messiah. They didn't recognize him. You know, Jesus right. was there and they didn't recognize him. They killed him. Yes. And so now Paul is saying, I, I don't know if Paul felt that way, but maybe he felt like he has to make up for all these lost <laughs> decades of where the Jews are supposed to share the good news that there is a Messiah going to come. Mm. Well, he's now here. I'm going to share this with the world. And it's amazing when you, when you look at the, where he traveled, how much he was able to accomplish in one lifetime without the technology that we have. They didn't have, you know, Hope Channel and, and <laughs> cameras. He went from place to place <laughs> sharing the good news. He was, he was compelled by the gospel. Mm. Yes. Uh, and as he said, he was a debtor because he, what else can he do when you hear the good news? You yeah. have to share it. Yeah, but later on we'll see in chapters 9 through 11 mm-hmm. that he, uh, that, that the gospel in many ways, as you said, mm-hmm. was given to Israel. Yes. Mm-hmm. And this was Israel's responsibility to send it to the whole world to go out and he's kind of fulfilling that Israel, is, 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 not is, Israel. Is, Israelite, <laughs> I'm working at the politics here, uh, <laughs> Israelite, that, that Jewish uh, injunction that mm-hmm. God has, has given him. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go to the text. I find interesting there in verse 14. Verse 14 starts off with the phrase, I am, as Sebastian says, I am a debtor. Mm-hmm. Verse 15, if you go in the middle there, it says that uh, I am ready. ready. Yep. Yeah. Mm. And then verse 16 says, I am not ashamed. Mm. Yes. Uh, what is this? What is, there's, a, there's a motif going on here. Yes. There's, there's a repetition. Again, this is a very personal letter, but what does this reveal about, about Paul, do you think? Uh, mm-hmm. What's, well, I what's think one in his heart uh, that you see? What, what I... To me, what immediately jumps out in the text when you see this, I'm a debtor, I'm ready, and now I'm not ashamed. So it's almost like he's leading you up to crescendo to his statement that he's not ashamed to preach the gospel. So I'm not ashamed to pay a debt that I owe, Mm -hmm. right? I'm not ashamed to do something that I'm ready to do, right? And he says there in verse 15, Mm -hmm. so as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. So Paul is looking at the fact that he went universal in verse 14, right, to Greeks and barbarians, to the wise and to the unwise. He kind of blankets everybody. And then in verse 15, he's like, as much as is in me, I'm ready to preach it to even you who are in Rome. Mm -hmm. So Paul is now crescendoed himself so that we're seeing him declaring his intention Mm -hmm. for the book. 
this is where I'm about to get into. I couldn't come to you in verse 11, but I can write. Mm -hmm. And it goes to show you that when we live in a day right now, even where there may be limitations in order to share the gospel, mm -hmm. we must take a note from Paul in the book of Romans that find a way to share it. Mm. Even if it's not the traditional expected way to share it, adjust yourself. And that's what Paul did. I longed to come to you. I wanted to come, but guess what? I'm ready. And if that means I have to do it digitally, if I have to do that in person, if I have to do it through a family or an mm -hmm. email, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's and, what Paul's and we, we lose that, uh, that excitement, this I am and I am, this crescendo, mm -hmm. because we don't know, uh, and it, kind of what I said at the, the top of the show, we don't know there's a disease out there. We right. don't know about the solution mm -hmm. and the cure to it. So we're really not that excited about it. So when we, when we read Paul, be like, I am and I'm I am, we're like, all right, dude, chill out. You're like a little, you're a little, you're a little, you're a little extra. Yeah. yeah, can you just chill out a bit? Uh, what, what is he excited about, Cali? Like, what's the crescendo at coming up to point? What's uh, the apex of that? Oh, that's a lot of pressure. Um, <laughs> it's found in verse 16. Verse <laughs> 16, it says uh, the gospel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and it's the gospel of Christ. And, yeah. you know, other elsewhere he says that there is no other gospel or people come in with false gospels. Yes. And so Paul is so focused on the true gospel, which is all about Christ, mm -hmm. what Christ has done for us and the gifts he gives us in his life mm -hmm. and in his death and his mm -hmm. resurrection. And I do want to go back really quick just mm -hmm. because I want to go back to verse 14, just an idea that we kind of talked about, but I love that Paul, even from the beginning, he doesn't like ease into like, so other people get the gospel. I don't I want to say that quietly. <laughs> like from the very beginning, he's like, listen, yeah. <laughs> like I'm a debtor to everyone and I'm mm. going to preach to everyone in Rome. Not like, hey, Jews, you guys partition yourselves. I'll talk to you really quick. And I just thinking about Paul's background, mm. that was a very, very bold move. Radical thing because you could, yeah. you could ostracize so many people, like sure. they don't listen to that radical preacher who talks to everyone. Mm. And so Paul is just so sold to the message of the gospel and to Christ. Mm. And it's not about like, well, let me gather enough people and then we'll you know, strategize. He's just like, listen, the gospel's for everyone. If that offends you, that's your fault. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep giving it to everyone. Mm -hmm. And so I love that just from the beginning, yeah. um, because he, you know, he talks about it throughout, but from the start, he's just like, just to make it clear my intentions, yeah. mm. the gospel's for all people. Yeah, can we, can we, can we go to verse 14? So I'm yeah. both a debtor to the Greeks and to the barbarians. And then verse 16, it says that the gospel is the power of God to everyone who believes, to the Jew, first and also mm -hmm. to the Greek. Mm -hmm. um, can, can someone give us some bearings here, Jonathan? Like, why are there Greeks and then Romans and then barbarians? You know, and like, where are where are the Americans? Where are the Austrians? And where Jonathan's are the Koreans a barbarian. Here? Well, so, uh, it's true. Are these groups of people that Paul's talking about? And kind of give us some give them a GPS coordinates. Yeah, well, I mean, we're here in, in the first century after Christ and uh, you have the Roman Empire that's ruling. Mm -hmm. But then in the north, you have the barbarian tribes. You have, uh, you know, the, it says here, um, the Greeks, mm -hmm. you, have the, you had the Greek Empire before, but they were spread out everywhere. So you had a, a mixture of cultures. Rome was ruling. Uh, the Jews had also been spread into different places uh, yeah. throughout the centuries. And they had pockets here and there and synagogues here and there. Um, but America is still far from the landscape. Uh, okay. you know? <laughs> All right. Yeah. So this is the center of the known world at this excellent, time. Excellent, excellent, excellent. We'll be back after this break. But before, uh, before we go there, we're going to look at the wrath of God and how that, partakes, uh, how that uh, connects with the gospel here. So stay with us. Oh, welcome back. Uh, Jonathan was mentioning that we had in the ancient world, you had the Greeks who were sophisticated and civilized. We had the barbarians who were the other. And then we had a small <laughs> little minority of the Jews who at that time was a minority, but they had this religion and this religion was to spread to the Greek and to the barbarians. So that barbarian is not meant to be offensive in any way, yeah. but uh, just as the non-Greeks is probably a, a better way to look mm -hmm. at it. Correct. Um, we're going to look at uh, verse 16 there. It says, I am not ashamed. Mm. And I want to talk a little bit about this. Mm -hmm. um, why I mentioned at the top of the show, ashamed, why, why does he say mm. this, John? You know, it's, it's very easy and nowadays, especially where we're from, you know, here in the United States, it's very easy to, to claim you're Christian mm -hmm. and be accepted that way. But back in those days, uh, the, the, the gospel message centered around the, you know, the crucifixion, the death of the Messiah. That was a radical concept. Why would God die? How is that even possible, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and not only just die, but die on the cross, the most shameful possible way to yeah. die. It's yeah. a horrible, shameful death. And, and, and to claim that as 
the good news message and <laughs> this is the person you worship, criminals are on the cross, right? right. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 you the know, weak, the, right. the weak, the, mm -hmm. just the worst of the worst end up on the cross. And so now you're worshiping a guy who was up, there. that is shameful, mm. right? Mm -hmm. But Paul, this is, this is why this is so radical, Paul saying, I'm not ashamed. And of course, the book of Romans is going to explain why he's not mm -hmm. ashamed. Mm -hmm. But to, to someone who had, has not heard much or heard that these people worship some guy on the cross, mm -hmm. that is like, mm -hmm. that's shameful. You don't even want to think about that. And if you've seen it, you don't want to see and it. And I would also add to that, you have the component of persecution. Yes. Right. So it was illegal to worship anyone outside of Caesar. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we're, when we're grappling with this whole concept of being ashamed, you're dealing with your message is shameful because mm -hmm. what you're saying is the person who's most powerful in your religion mm -hmm. and in your worldview just was crucified by our emperor. Right. Yeah. Right. And then on the other side, yeah. we've been killing you off in Colosseums and all these things for worshiping someone outside of Caesar. Mm -hmm. So Paul is essentially dealing with a certain declaration, an indomitable spirit that says, I'm not gonna be influenced by the culture of my day. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be quieted because it's not popular, because it's not convenient, mm -hmm. and also because it may appear right now that my religion is weak. Right. Mm -hmm. But you would laugh, right, looking back you know, thousands of years, 2,000 years ago and think Christianity covers a third of the earth mm -hmm. religiously and its influence and power and financially. And you're like, uh, at the time in Rome, people would have looked at you like you're crazy. Mm -hmm. and said, we'll be bigger than Rome mm -hmm. by far. So we looked at this culturally, we looked at this anthropologically and mm -hmm. sociologically, but what at the core is the gospel? Like, mm -hmm. right? Like, I'm so excited. It's gonna, I'm not ashamed. It's gonna do all these things. And, but what does it do? And, and I think we also maybe, maybe talk about what is shame in that sense? Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's shame is when I can't talk about it because I'm afraid of what other people may think. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And so mm -hmm. it's having that public awareness and that public opinion that is, is very important to me. But he's saying, I'm not really uh, worried about public opinion right. because this trumps it all. Correct. Right? But what is this? And then Callie said, it's the power of God. But the power of what this? I mean, we, sometimes it gets so Christian cliched, we mm -hmm. kind of yeah. lose what's at, what it's at. Well, I think it's the cure. It's the cure for the thing that is broken in man, right? Which mm. Paul eventually will go into sin, mm. right? This is what's going to deliver you from the spiritual pandemic mm -hmm. that is swept over this planet, right? So God is like, I'm trying to contain my own COVID-19 <laughs> situation, mm -hmm. right? And this thing is more aggressive, more debilitating, more oppressive and creates a lot more problems, mm -hmm. you know? And so Paul is essentially like, I am carrying the antidote to the greatest problem in human society, mm -hmm. just in the power of these words. Mm -hmm. And how can I be ashamed of that which solves and will cure every ill in your life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that makes perfect sense yeah. for the apostle Paul. Yeah. It's like, there's no way you can be ashamed. Yeah. And that's why, even though I can't come physically, I'm gonna write it to you. I mean, I'm just, I'm just the audacity of Paul mm -hmm. in this chapter one is, is mm -hmm. pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just thinking like, I don't like the color pink. I, 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 I am ashamed of the color pink. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like drinking Pepto-Bismol. I, I don't like going down the pink aisle of Target with all the, the toys there. So I take my boys and we go to the Lego section or to where the, 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 the action okay. figures are okay. at, not dolls. Okay. You have a lot of and We're well, working I mean, on your manhood. Yeah, okay. yeah. Please pray for me oh, that may enjoy the color pink. Um, <laughs> Real and, men work. And, and, and that of which I'm ashamed of, if this color pink mm -hmm. had the power to, <laughs> to heal every single person of the pandemic, mm -hmm. I'd be flouting this pink flag. <laughs> the all pink. I don't know if that's even, anyway. Yes. No, no, you know what I mean? It works. I mean, it's, and I don't care about the social connotations mm -hmm. of, 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 a, of a criminal, right. of, a, of this horrible death, of a, of a small little Jewish you know, people, right. I'll be flouting as, as loud as I can. Yes. And then this is the God of creation that, that's, that's giving this answer. Mm. Yeah. And this, is, this makes me wonder as a Christian, like, do I have that? Mm. You know, or am I, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, and we do this. So I'm a, I am, I'm a Christian, we kind of do this little right. like. Well, ask yourself the question, if you've seen pink heal someone, mm. there's no possible way, right? To me, that ashamedness, if you will, comes from the fact that some of us haven't really felt the power shame. of the gospel. The shame in this would be shame. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my editor's coming up, but yeah, that's it's shame. Right. Yeah. So it's like that shame <laughs> is present. <laughs> it's present because we have not experienced the power of the gospel, mm. right? Because we haven't seen it in reality in our lives and in the lives of people around mm. us. But when mm. you preached it and you see a person come in tears 
to the foot of Christ and lay down their life and see the transformation mm -hmm. that I was a drunk, but now I'm sober, that I was addicted to porn and now I'm clean, mm -hmm. that I was a prideful, arrogant person and now I'm willing to be humble and defer to others, mm -hmm. to see the change of relationships in my life. Mm -hmm. That, when you've seen that transformation and when you've experienced yes. it, there's no question, right, that pink, you will promote it because you're like, look, this is not cunningly devised favors. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think another thing that happens too is even if we do experience that, we forget mm. because we're so used to having that peace of God. Mm. I know sometimes I, I've talked to people before and they're going through different things and I'm just like, yeah, and in my mind, I have all these like spiritual responses. Not that, that, not that you can ever be sad, but mm. and I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's good. But then I'll mention something biblical and they're like, tell me more about that. And I'm like, oh, you don't know that. Oh, I'm so sorry. Like we, we almost forget that there are people who mm. don't know God, who don't know Christ. Or we get Christ. acclimatized or, or used to those things. Yeah. And, we're like, and we oh, also, Jesus is going to change your whole life. <gasps> oh, you don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> so true. yeah, and there's, there, I remember just talking to friends about just even just reconstructing their view of God of mm. like, like, oh, like, cause they, they thought, you know, well, he, my, someone in my, in my life died because God doesn't like me. And I'm like, what? That's not biblical. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, be able mm -hmm. to explain that. And they were like, I, I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. And so just not grappling with the same issues, we, we just forget that the world is sick. Mm -hmm. So it also just, we need to not be so selfish. So just mm -hmm. because I'm not sick doesn't mean mm -hmm. no one else is sick. Mm -hmm. I think this is a super hardcore, really important point for us to really understand the gospel mm -hmm. is we need to understand the sinful context that we're in. Yes. Yeah. Right? If we don't understand that we're living in a desert, we don't appreciate the cup of water that's offered to us in the midst Amen. of that context. Yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, I just want to point out one more thing here. As far as we talked about the power of God, Sebastian, mm. you mentioned it. It's changing lives. When you see it, you, you know it's real. Verse mm. 17, it says, For in it, in, you know, in the power of God for salvation, uh, in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So what Paul is saying is like the gospel is God's work mm -hmm. and it can affect you if you, as it says, you know, faith. by faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to make that very clear from the beginning. Mm. Paul is making clear right in the beginning, couple, first couple verses here, mm. that salvation is based on what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your part is to believe Absolutely. that God is good and that God is doing these and things. That's it. And that's it. <laughs> you are not in any way participating in it when as, as far as merits is concerned towards mm -hmm. this salvation, which is a radical concept compared to any of the other religions at his time and even yes. today. Mm -hmm. Only in the gospel of the Word of God mm -hmm. will you have a God who works for your salvation mm -hmm. and gives it to you for free. I mean, we're talking about it in a different episode, but like we got to mention, I mean, yeah. there's something in us that wants to do something <laughs> yes, yes, to yeah. to get us out of the predicament that we're in. Yep. Um, I mean, let's let's, let's I can't talk too much about it because I don't want to spoil That's the later. future episode. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's go to verse 18, and then there's there's a phrase there that that many people may mm -hmm. may kind of uh, 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 verse 18. Mm -hmm. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. So I want to ask you guys. Mm. Uh, can, can, you, can you tell me more about this wrath of God? Mm -hmm. uh, because that's a phrase that, that, that people automatically shut down on. They don't like, uh, I mean, I don't, you know, we're not looking for the wrath of God. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, is, this, is this some kind of evil emperor that's gonna electrocute us because he's angry? Uh, what is that, Kelly? <laughs> well, first, just a characteristic that we can see about the wrath of God in verse 18 mm. that I think is very encouraging and gives a lot of clarity mm -hmm. is what it is against. Mm -hmm. It is against ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, not against men. Mm. So it, it's not God against men, against humanity. Mm -hmm. It's against sinfulness and ungodliness and wickedness. Mm -hmm. And those two things only come together when humanity clings to it. Mm -hmm. And so I think, because sometimes we just see it's like, I did something bad, God hates me. Uh, no. Um, but it's like, it, it's never, God never directs his anger that way. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and another part is that God's anger here we see is mm -hmm. it's not, it's not partial where we're very partial in our, our, our anger against sin. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't like your sin, my sin, great, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I will keep it, mm -hmm. <laughs> but your sin is bad, Justin or mm -hmm. Jonathan's, mm -hmm. but God's like, no, 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 all of it, mm -hmm. <laughs> all of it's bad. Mm -hmm. And I want to save all of you from all of it. Yeah. So yeah. those are two characteristics from the onset that are so different from our definition of wrath yes. or anger. Thank you for that clarification. That yeah. that that, that, that you know, humanizes or but not that's not the right word. But it, God it, it brings it. Yeah, <laughs> God dizes it. Makes it makes it understandable. Yeah. And also, Especially. and also notice that as he progresses from here, because mm -hmm. he says at the end of verse eighteen, 
who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they know the truth, yes. and therefore they're, they're knowing God, they're understanding him, they understand what he expects, and they're rebelling against that. Yes. And what we notice three times in this chapter moving forward in verse 24, yes. it says, therefore God also gave them up. Mm -hmm. And then we see in verse 26, for this reason, mm -hmm. God gave mm -hmm. them up. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 28, God gave them over to a awesome, debased mind. Awesome repetition. Yes, so yes, in yes, each, yes. each of these sections, he's, he's just driving home the fact that something was looking for you, and because you hold this truth and, and you're suppressing it, I have to just give you over to your own desire. Mm -hmm. Like you can have mm -hmm. it. Correct. And so to me, the wrath of God is not so much about the idea of God wanting to destroy, mm -hmm. but essentially God is saying that I wanted to keep you. I didn't want to give you up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you were persistent, so now I have to give you up. Mm -hmm. And, and that, in essence, is the wrath of God. I mean, too often we think of the wrath of God as, who's the angriest person that I know? What, mm -hmm. what is the most amount of <laughs> wrath that I've, I've experienced? Uh, right. I don't think and we that. start thinking of like, man, when I was a little kid, my dad, he just went like, you know, Off atomic on me. <laughs> right. Oh, so God's wrath must it's be like, like bad, double atomic, right? right? Like, whoa. The billows of flames. Uh, but we're seeing know. that this is a attribute of God's character against anything that is unrighteous. And we see that the heart of God wants us to change so that God and humanity can coexist mm -hmm. as evidenced in the person of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Uh, this has been a wonderful study in Romans chapter 1. We want to encourage you to go to inversebible.org and get into the Bible study guide. We want to say thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. We'll look at Romans chapter 2 and Romans chapter 3 and 4 and is a systematic study in the topic of salvation. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week here on Inverse.